serious, sailors, seamen and overall people who spend a vast amount of time in the ocean. Have you ever witnessed something you would catalogue as supernatural or unusual? What was it like? Distress flares in the middle of the Indian Ocean sailing Nigeria Japan at night when I was a third mate, looked less than 4 miles away, altered course to it, called the old man, found nothing and no one over the course of 2 hours. I was the only one to see it, and I know what I saw. My watchman was down closing cabin shades. I understand why we had to move on. Keeps me up some nights though. Did we come so close to saving someone's life, and just leave them there? Alone in the ocean, with no food or water. Did someone think they were rescued but we ended up too far from them? Should we have waited until daytime? Did I just hallucinate? These types of immensely consequential what if questions tend to weigh all the more heavily on people who care for others. I believe it is more wise to feel relief that you tried to investigate what you saw in the hopes of helping, regardless of it having been real or a hallucination. You and your team put the effort into checking. Thank you for sharing your story. Sailed on Tal ships for a good while, among other things. Saw some green flashes, a moon bow, lots of phosphorescence, big whales, St. Elmo's fire on our mast, steel ship this time. But the only creepy story was at port. The only person who had ever died on the ship was over a hundred years ago, and he fell from the rigging. Went splat. One of the crew was up furling sails, and was about to step out onto the foot rope that runs along the yard. He said he got an overwhelming urge to not step on it, and felt a tug on his harness keeping him from stepping out. He was so freaked out he kept the other two guys behind him from getting on the line as well. The other guys started getting a really bad feeling too, and they decided to check out the foot rope. It had been really degrading on the inside, even through the outside looked mostly fine. The line probably would have snapped as they climbed out there, and they would have fallen, as you are pretty much free climbing until you get to a stopping point. While on watch, I saw a seagull swallow an entire sea cucumber, that easily had a bigger circumference than the seagull's neck, in one go. I was disgusted but also impressed. A maelstrom in Norway, it's actually really fascinating, but looking down into the currents it's a bit freaky, look it up it's like a load of whirlpools all happening together. I used to live near the Corrie Reckon in Scotland, scary crap, they once threw in a mannequin with a life jacket and a depth gauge and it was instantly sucked straight down 262 meters then dragged along the seabed for a few miles. So yeah don't fall in, even with a life jacket. In the Gulf of Eden having been at sea for a while and with absolutely blistering heat, I heard my nickname called three times, clearly and loudly. It was my first time with this particular crew and none of them knew my nickname. My best guess is dehydration and stress but I'll never forget it. I was on navigation watch with a second mate one night off the Philippines. The ship was on autopilot making for Manila. It was a clear, still, dark night. Through the binoculars I picked up navigation lights of another ship about 5 degrees off the port bow. It was well off but I noted the bearing and checked the radar. Nothing. This was not unusual. If it was one of the small local fishing vessels they can be hard to pick up. On the other hand, they usually don't bother with navigation lights either. Quickish technical detail. Skip if familiar with the purpose and function of nav lights. Navigation lights on a vessel are baffled so they can only be seen from a certain direction. Looking at a boat dead ahead, coming toward you, you will see a red light to the right of a green light. This is what I could see. If the boat turns to their right, or starboard, the two lights will begin to move together, and the green light will fade from view because of the baffles that are around it. As the turn continues you will be able to see the red port, their left side, light only, and a bit later the white stern light will appear as the red fades behind its baffles. This way you can tell in an instant the orientation of another vessel in the dark. 10 minutes passed and I checked the bearing again. Still 5 degrees off the port bow. Red and green visible. I checked the radar again. Still nothing. I alerted the second mate. 5 minutes later, nothing changed. Nothing on radar. We were on a collision bearing with an invisible vessel that was steadily getting closer. As a precaution we switched back to manual steering and I took the helm. By now I could make out the lights without the binoculars, still coming directly at us. We were on the point of taking evasive measures when suddenly the lights started moving together. 
We assumed that the other vessel had finally spotted us and was turning away to their right. I was expecting the red lights to fade from view. Except it didn't. The two lights simply swapped position. The red went to the left and the green went to the right. They remained 5 degrees off the port bow. And then they moved back again. Still, nothing on radar. Nothing through the binoculars. We eventually passed the lights within 20 meters. From the wing of the bridge I could see with perfect clarity straight down at it, whatever it was. There was nothing to see except the two lights. One red and one green. Floating freely in air about 10 feet above the ocean. Reflecting back off the waves. Gently and occasionally swapping positions in the night. The closest to supernatural or at least something I can't explain. Happened halfway between Cornwall and the Sillies. We were sailing in a fresh breeze. 5-6 featuring. Swells maybe. That's perfectly fine sailing weather but the boat will rock and there will be quite a bit of noise from the wind. The sails and waves. So we sail happy along when suddenly the sea is perfectly flat and everything is quiet. Like somebody turned the sound off. I look around and the water is pitch dark. It only lasted for a minute and then everything was back to normal but I got a really eerie feeling. Flew helicopters in the navy for a few years. On my first deployment to Southeast Asia I was flying over the sea of Japan and saw a large pulsing aura of red light far enough below the surface I could not make out a source. We were 30-ish miles from shore and had not been briefed on any assets in the area that might make something like that make sense. No erroneous indications on instruments or radio chatter. Just slow steady pulsing red light. We saw it, circled it a few times, made a note of the time and location we encountered it and my crew chief asked if I wouldn't mind getting the heck out of there. So we finished our transit and I made a note of everything in my debrief. I passed it up the chain of command but they basically wrote it off as some sort of visual phenomenon we had from a long day of flying in dry suits. It's always been hard to imagine our entire crew hallucinating the same thing. My first thought when I read this was that I've heard Japanese vessels carrying dangerous cargo are required to display a flashing red light, at night or in ports or something like that. I couldn't find anything else about it but I suppose it's possible you saw a mirage or reflection of that in the water. Just a thought. Have you ever seen 3040, as best as I could determine? Humpback whales feeding together? I know this isn't supernatural but one whale is so seldom seen by people, let alone 30 scooping up krill at the same time. I'll never forget that. I had the chance to go whale watching off the coast of Maine many years ago and my family happened to pick the day that a pod of 15 humpbacks decided to bubble feed all around us. Our captain told us he had been working for that company for almost 30 years doing daily excursions and he had never seen that many together at once. It really is a humbling experience. When I was roving patrol on a submarine I always thought I saw someone walking parallel to me down missile compartment upper level. If I was on the port side then I saw them on the starboard side and vice versa. I always chalked it up to pipes and valves creating weird shadows. Additionally, it felt heavy on that level like there was some sort of presence. The feeling you get when someone's watching you. I never told anyone. Then one day a few weeks into patrol, one of the other rovers asked me if it felt weird up there. He specifically said that he saw someone up there too just like I had. We shared stories and then talked to the third rover and he said I only go up there to do my rounds every hour then get the frick out of that haunted level. Spent a lot of time sailing commercially in the Irish Sea. On night watch you are always acutely aware of everything around you due to the silence and darkness. Some of the sounds you hear are deeply unsettling. I remember on a perfectly still night just hearing a gentle knocking noise coming from what seemed like the outside of the hull at the waterline. No idea what it was but it freaked me out all shift. I was a sailor in the navy. While I was on lookout duty on the bridge at night, a dude walked and stood beside me, breathing hard. I was looking out at sea and I was blocking the stairs going down. So I turned around to whisper sorry, and what do you know, there's no one. I was tired so I chalked this up to hallucination, but it felt real. I crewed on a tall ship and we were anchored with a bunch of others in a harbor. We had to take shifts at night because it was an old boat and did weird things. I was on shift in the little steering cabin when I heard someone running around the deck. I thought it was one of the other crew so I poked my head out and told them to knock it off. 
They kept running and I was afraid they'd slip so I followed them. We went around the whole ship twice before I caught up with a shapeless shadow which stopped and flew directly up into the air. Convinced it was a prank I walked back to the end of the boat when I saw we had drifted on anchor and were almost under the bow of a much larger ship. I called the rest of the crew and we sorted it out. But I might not have noticed until too late if it weren't for the weird shadow. That's a clab or termin. I read a story here once where someone had family who sailed around the world. One day in the North Atlantic, their sailboat was going over some gigantic swells. They didn't have brakes at the top. So it was safe, but the boat was rising and falling way beyond the neutral. At the bottom of a trough their uncle looked up to see the sun behind a wave and the silhouette of a whale inside. Above him. On a yacht delivery from France to Greece, after a couple of nights of no sleep, on the third night we were in the Bonifacio Straits. All around in the sea I could see drowning people, waving and shouting for help. We moored up the following morning. Sleep deprivation is a heck of a thing. Good thing you did not recognize the bodies in the water. I only worked as a walk-on, walk-off cabin attendant, but the old sea dogs always had far-fetched stories to tell. The engineer teaching us about watertight doors told us a story that happened to him on another ship that the same company used to own but was decommissioned and scraped in 2011. Theses watertight doors separate the different bulkheads, Underwater compartments that stop the whole ship from sinking if there is a hole in the hull. Think about the metal doors that slid down in the engine room of the Titanic. These doors are always closed. To get from compartment to compartment there was a lever that you pulled and the door opened. You stepped through. Then as soon as you let go of the lever, the door would close. For the safety of the ship it would close tight shut, even if there was a person blocking it. On this older ship there was an engineer who tripped and was crushed to death in one of these doors. Years later this engineer who told me the story tripped and fell on that same door and was about to be crushed to death in the same way. But just before killing him, it stopped and opened again. Despite no one being around and nothing touching the lever. And before anyone says that there must have been some safety thing installed. No. As I said before the one job of these doors is to close no matter what, or who is in the way. I can respect bro ghosts like that. Must have sucked to die that way. I can see how he'd not want anybody to die like that. Too. I was standing in the hangar bay waiting for morning muster at dawn somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Looking out at the ocean. I was intrigued by how smooth as glass the water was reflecting the clouds and the sky. Then the most beautiful, confusing, mesmerizing, and terrifying thing I ever saw happened. The water, for a moment, was so smooth that the horizon disappeared from view. The water was so smooth and reflective that it was impossible to tell where the water ended and the sky began. I honestly got dizzy knowing I was in the middle of the ocean floating on water, but my eyes were trying to convince me the ship was floating on nothing. Then the water started slightly rippling and the horizon was visible again. Every morning at sea after that I looked at the horizon hoping it would happen again, but it never did. I've never found out what caused this scientifically. The closest thing I could ever find was it was some sort of variant of the Fata Morgana Mirage. I don't think I will ever see anything as beautiful in my life ever again. Words fall extremely short at describing the feeling in that moment. I was a towboat, line haul vessel, deckhand on the Mississippi River. We docked up in Cairo. Illinois and my crewmates with the tugs deckhands went up a coupling to start building the tow up there while I finished in that coupling. I finished up and started walking up the starboard side towards the head of tow to find my crewmates. It was like 2.30 am and I saw a dark man like figure walking up to the head so I was following calling out the mate's name. We're supposed to wear headlamps but this figure didn't and I wondered how he didn't trip over all the wires, kevils, etc in the pitch black darkness. Got to the head of tow and the figure was gone. Turns out I went too far towards the shore side, very far from my boat, and I was spooked after that. I ran back towards the boat and stayed inside for a bit. It was my first trip and safe to say, scared the crap out of me. One of the most magical nights I ever had was when I was serving in a NZ Navy warship, and we were homeward bound after a long and unpredictable deployment. I was dealing with a bout of insomnia, and decided to go down aft for a breath of fresh air. It was a very dark, moonless night, and as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I really began to appreciate the phosphorescence glowing in our wake. 
bright green against the dark water. Then I looked closer, to see a pod of dolphins playing in the Fusperizants, leaving their own bright glowing trails as they streaked through the water. Now, I knew what it was, and what caused it, but it was something that I imagine would have appeared quite mystical to sailors back in the past. It was stunning though, I sat and watched them for about an hour. Such a vivid memory. Seeing bioluminescent bacteria is such a cool experience. I had the pleasure of seeing it once on the coast of Cape Cod in the summer. All the waves were crashing with this blue glow along the wave pattern. Really a surreal feeling. When I was forward lookout I saw a ball type object bouncing right to left at the horizon. Definitely was no satellite nor a planet star. Not too sure what it was. Oh sure. Lots of auditory hallucinations. You're all alone in the middle of the ocean and you hear your name being called all the time. Or you're down below, and hear someone running on the deck. Grandad was a chief in the navy. Dad is a merchant marine. I'm a sailor right after my first tour. Me and Grandad are both medical so we have some ghost stories. One of his stories was a case of mass somnambulism. Sleepwalking. On the USS Roosevelt that he documented but was never publicly addressed or explained back in the 60s. Sleepwalking is dangerous not only because of the risks of injury, but because of the implications of underlying issues like night seizures or sleep apnea. A few dozen people sleepwalking a month is not unheard of on a carrier, but apparently in a 3 month period there was over 400 plus individual cases from over 100 sailors, from lower enlisted to senior officers, that were reported independently. These people came from all over the carrier and he said he couldn't find any link to them. He was tasked with recording, but was never briefed on why it was happening, what caused it, or why it stopped. It was just dropped. Our speculation is drugs, or government testing, but we'll never know for sure. That's one of my granddad's stories. One of mine was on a small boy, smaller ship, that was getting rough turbulence while underway in the Pacific. I swear we went into some kind of Bermuda Triangle crap because we got into this super calm part. I'm assuming the eye of awesome crap. I'm not a meteorologist, and it felt like an out of body experience. Like the world paused and everything kinda became quiet and ringing like tinnitus for what felt like at least half an hour. And then suddenly it all came flooding back like being forced back into my body and being aware. It was still calm at that point, and we'd only felt the calm for maybe a few minutes. But I talked to some of my guys afterwards and they felt something similar. At the calm point, some said they felt high. I wouldn't know about it. One of our lieutenants said he felt like he passed out and woke up like sleepwalking. It was a surreal shared experience. Doc on the ship, our corpsman chief, said it was probably some pressure drop that made us feel disoriented though but we still joke we all got abducted for a minute and returned. My dad's done some trips into the Atlantic single-handed. He's reported many hallucinations, mostly auditory, like hearing people call his name etc. But more scarily once he thought he saw a container ship about to run him down. You can't really sleep properly for the first few days because of all the coastal fishing boats, so it was probably just down to sleep deprivation. Alone in a small boat on the Atlantic. That's gonna be a huge no thank you from me. I work security on different ships. One time during night shift on a cruise ship, my colleague and I were in the security office watching the CCTV cameras and just talking crap to pass the time. At the exact same time we both saw a black figure shadow pass in front of the camera in the children's play area. We both got super freaked out but kept watching the other cameras in the vicinity to see if whatever it was passed by those, as it was the only way it could go from where we saw it and there was no way it could leave the area without passing by in front of one of the cameras. It never did, so we went to the area to check it out but obviously found nothing. Afterwards we went back to review the footage and didn't see any shadow moving in that camera again, even though we both saw it the first time in the live feed. Needless to say we kinda started avoiding the kids area at night after that. A lot of death happens out at sea. I know this is boring, but I had a night watchman friend who kept capturing ghosts on camera but when I saw the footage it always looked like a gnat flew close to the lens and an optical illusion made it look 8 feet tall and on the ground. From down in the engine room, the ship makes a lot of noise, even when it's not moving. Sometimes those creaks, groans, and bangs can sound a lot like voices. 
Another example that freaked us all out was when the whole engine team heard the same long, low moans all day. None of us knew where they were from until the deck officers told us we'd had some whales beside us most of the day, in Alaska. For something genuinely creepy, every contract I've done since I was a cadet, at least one person has died on the boat. That's 80 years, at least 2 people a year. NMB, not me but, my friend's dad is an old like 30 or 40 year US Navy vet, no nonsense kind of guy, many years ago he was on a ship, and he got a call a sailor was freaking out, and trying to jump from the ship, he was crying and saying he needed to get to his mother, not long after getting the guy calmed and into the medical area, they received message the sailor's mother had died that night. I was a shell fisherman for a while, the one thing that freaked me out the most, I was chest deep in the water harvesting oyster lines. When I started to see swirls of water like something was swimming just under the surface, and it was coming towards me, it really freaked me out, then a head popped up right next to me and it was a little seal. Scared the crap out of me, I yelled, which in turn scared the seal. We both turned and went our own ways. The image of a man and a seal bumping into each other and screaming while running the other way is hilarious. It was about 3am during my watch on an ocean passage. I was sleep deprived and fatigued. The sailing yacht was silhouetted against the moon glistening on the water. Suddenly a dolphin jumped from the water below the boom, broad reach, and splashed back in. Then again, then again, then again for the next 3 hours with the exact position and sound over and over and over. I felt like I was descending into madness because I couldn't stop the apparent delusion. I'm still not sure if there ever was a dolphin, or if it just happened once and was then stuck in some sort of mental loop. The games they play can really throw us on a loop. I was on a cruise in Alaska and dolphins seem to spend most of their time playing games that make them laugh, like they are cracking jokes for hours on end. I got one for ya. I was in the US in 2010 to 2014 and deployed twice on two different ships. The first ship I was on the USS Pearl Harbor LSD-52 we were deployed doing a Westpac. There was a span of time where we were just sailing around in open waters not near any land whatsoever. I was one of the top side watch standers meaning that I was responsible for reporting any other sea or air activity, i.e. other boats or airplanes. The area we were in was so incredibly remote that there was almost no activity anywhere. Didn't see a single boat or plane for days. One night I was standing the midnight to 4am watch and had just switched to the forward lookout. So I'm standing at the bridge of the ship on the outer deck looking forward. It must have been about 3.45am because my relief just came up to let me know he would take over from here. We talked for a few minutes when all of a sudden I got a call from the bridge. The officer on duty was asking me what that was. Me and my watch relief look forward and there is this giant light coming out of the ocean. This thing was huge probably the size of two mobile homes put side by side. It comes up from the ocean and then passes overhead maybe 70 feet from the top of the ship and there was absolutely no sound. Everyone started freaking out. And the craziest thing is that none of our radars picked up any activity whatsoever. We all were just in awe. And no one had any explanation. But we all agreed that we witnessed a UFO. UFO are not talked as much as UFO but many sailors report them. Creepy stuff. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.